Hello and welcome to the Disabled Diva Podcast. I am your host, Cynthia Covert. Life with fibromyalgia, psoriasis, cirrhotic arthritis, endometriosis, and a yet-to-be-determined source of a bowel obstruction is tricky, painful, and absolutely frustrating. One of the most embarrassing issues I have faced throughout my 20-year-plus journey is when flares interfere with my ability to communicate. I have no problem sitting naked on an exam table, but when my mind and my mouth fail me, I'm horrified. In this episode of the Disabled Diva podcast, I'll be sharing some examples of how my chronic illnesses affect my ability to communicate, why having the support of my family during these flares is important, and how I prepare my family on how to advocate for me when I'm unable to speak for myself. As someone who has a handful of not-so-common allergies and has doctors who ignore or dismiss them, it's extremely important that my family know what to look for and how to address medical staff. Each one of my chronic and acute conditions is to blame for these moments of not being able to communicate. I cannot control how often my cognitive functions will be affected by pain and inflammation nor am I able to predict when they will occur. The chronic community often refers to these flares as brain fog, fibro fog, chemo brain, or brain fatigue. Sometimes these flares are a result of my brain just being overwhelmed. It works overtime processing pain and it isn't always able to keep up. Other cognitive issues stem from my medications that lower my pain level. My brain becomes just as tired and relaxed as my body does. And lastly, fighting pain and having to concentrate harder than usual, well, it's exhausting and sometimes my brain decides, well, I'm going to take a break. The impact that they have on my cognitive functions is as follows. First, there's the inability to process information. This could be in spoken or written forms of communication. There are times when I may read a paragraph five times and still not comprehend what it said. Verbal verbal communication can be just as tricky as my mind doesn't always catch every word or is able to process the tone that was relayed to me. Then there's the loss of words. No matter how familiar, familiar the word may be to me, when flares affect my brain, I can spend hours, hours (laughs) trying to remember a word that's as simple as fork, spoon, door. (laughs) With my current level, pain level being so severe, I don't have hours to spend racking my brain trying to figure it out. So with that said, until recently, I used to allow shame and embarrassment over something that I had no control over to stop me from asking for help. However, now, unless I really want to spend five hours writing one sentence, I've learned to ask my family and I'm no longer embarrassed by it. Uh, Next, speak like Yoda I do. Something my family and I began noticing about mm, 10 years into my chronic journey was when I began speaking like Yoda from Star Wars. Simple phrases like, I think your dress is beautiful, are verbalized as, beautiful your dresses. Then we have verbalizing the opposite of what I'm thinking. I hear the words that I want to say in my head, but what I actually relay to others is the complete opposite. You want to talk about frustrating trying to get your point across when you're not actually even saying your point? Yeah. And last but not least, a loss of tone creates misunderstandings. So instead of hearing joy in my voice when congratulating someone, I might sound sarcastic or angry. For example, instead of, 
I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. Or, oh, well, that, that wasn't even that good. Let's try again. Congratulations. I am so happy for you. There we go. That sounded happy, right? I hope so. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I guess I'll know when we, I re-listen to this, huh? All right. But instead, what will happen often, and it has created so many misunderstandings, is instead of sounding happy, it'll come out as, oh, good for you. Or, I'm so happy for you. And I don't mean for that to happen. It's just that when my brain is so overwhelmed with pain, what I'm actually thinking of, I'm expressing is not what's coming out. It's like the, there's a misfire in there. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that one gets me into a lot of trouble. And again, I have no control over it. I try to catch it when I can. And I'm really thankful that my family understands their role in this and that we've come to a way to, to uh, bring it to my attention without... <sighs> without ridicule and without being mean. So as you can guess, <laughs> these communication issues have become a, re a reason for me to rely on my husband and my children. Their role is to help me, <laughs> to help me recognize when something doesn't sound right and to help me convey necessary information to my doctors and also to explain what I'm just not understanding in the moment. I wasn't always receptive to their pointing out my communication errors, mainly because I didn't view it as helping. I mean, seriously, who wants to be corrected all the time, right? <laughs> but it was, it, what helped us is that I finally started really explaining how I felt about it. Not just like, what was going on, but how it made me feel when they would point out um, the things I did wrong. I felt like I was being punished or that I was, you know, it's like, like if, it put me back to like feeling like I was a, a school child being reprimanded and being, you know, put the dunce cap on, cap on her, you know, that's how it made me feel. And I needed to, to relay that to them so that we could find better ways to do it. So instead of yelling or barking at me saying that I screwed up or, you know, taking offense of what I did because now they understand what's going on, they've learned to gently inquire if the words and tone that they heard were really what I was trying to express. Explaining something that I'm not comprehending usually needs to be done at a later time. Most of the time, I'm not if I'm not comprehending something at that moment, no explanation will help my brain until it's had time to relax and focus. And then later on, I'll have them explain it to me again. And I'm like, oh my God, now it makes so much sense. And it was so, it's so easy for me to see. But just in that moment, my brain's so scrambled, it's, nothing is going to help. One of the biggest challenges that my family faces is advocating for me in a medical situation when my brain is overloaded or should I happen to be unconscious. Whether we're at a doctor's appointment, whether it's a visit to the emergency room, um, prep for surgery, any test or scan, they need to be ready to question everything that could be a problem due to my not so common yet quite severe allergies. Having my allergies listed on a medical chart, it's not enough. Doctors still, to this day, dismiss or ignore my allergies, and they've been the reason for many unnecessary reactions. To help my family, I have my allergies listed on a card in my wallet and the types of things that they need to cross-check. If any of this sounds familiar to you, you're not alone. <laughs> and here are some tips to help you and your family deal with them. First of all, please be careful not to accuse the person of screwing up. Please understand we 
half most of the time we don't even realize it's happening and we're not doing it intentionally this is something that is out of our control and it's humiliating and um coming at us with an accusatory tone it's just going to push us away and um it's not going to help the situation at all secondly address us with a calm and caring tone gently explain what you heard and patiently listen to our ex or our ex excuse me our explanation um and be patient with us even if we this is something that happens over and over because with me especially right now with the pain that i'm in with my abdomen it's happening a lot more and um had we not already had these talks and um learn to communicate better i this would be very difficult for me but it's a lot easier for me to deal with because of how we handle it now um and i really really encourage you to um talk to your families about this because it's this is something that can happen at any point in your chronic journey and um it's better to be prepared uh, lastly, that brings us to talk and listen to us. The more that you understand what we're feeling um, in regards to not just how we're physically feeling, but with what we're experiencing, the way that our body is failing us and how that makes us feel and how it makes us feel when it's pointed out and how what could be and then brainstorm what could be done to make it a better situation for both of you you know um the more that you understand us and what's going on with us the better equipped you'll be to deal with it to address it and to fix issues that stem from the moments that we're struggling with an inability to communicate correctly I do have a video that I did last year um, to help others learn more about improving communication skills with their loved ones when they're dealing with a chronic illness. It's called The Power of Connection, Exploring Communication Strategies for Chronic Illness. I've provided a link for you in the description. Um, I, it's free to watch. I do encourage you and your family to watch it. And um, there's also an accompanying workbook that can be purchased to help um, your family and you come up with um, a healthier, an emo especially an emotionally healthier way to communicate um, your needs. And not just your needs, but when things, when they need to figure out what you're really saying. <laughs> So whether you are the person who is experiencing these types of problems or if you're a family member, just please understand, again, you, you're not alone. There are millions of people all over the world who are experiencing the same or similar problems. Finding support beyond each other is also important. I invite you to join one or both of my Facebook groups. The Disabled Divas Chronic Pain Community is my personal group for anyone living with chronic pain. I am also the community leader for the Sora. Oh my gosh, my mouth doesn't want to work today. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Well, <laughs> what was I saying, right? All right. So I am also the community leader for the psoriatic arthritis community on Facebook, which is hosted by WebMD. You can scan the QR code on the screen, or I've provided links to both groups in the description for you to join. So what type of communication issues does your chronic illness create and how that is, if you have, how have you addressed them with your family members? 
have you come up with a plan? Is it working? Could it use improvement? What tips do you have for other listeners? I want to thank you for taking time and tuning into my podcast today. If you found value in this episode, do me a favor, subscribe, leave a review, and share it on your social media channels because you never know who needs to hear this. Until next time, this is the Disabled Diva wishing you a great, big, beautiful tomorrow.